Sandy Hill. This is a property that we have on management in the Ilford area, IG1. Um, we're going to be showing you some of the challenges that we've had with this property, but side by side with that, we're also going to be showing you some of the ways we've actually solved those challenges. Um, in property, there's always going to be problems, so one of the good things is to understand and have a good team behind you who can help you solve those problems and make sure that you move forward with that. Now, quick tip for anyone who's interested in HMOs or anyone who's interested in buying, rent to rent, management of HMOs, always make sure that you have a lockbox real close uh, to the front of the property. That's one of the best ways to make sure that you can have easy access to the property, whether that's access for your cleaner, we have a cleaner that comes to this property regularly, or whether that's access for tradesmen or any other people that you need to be able to get into the property. So quick tip number one, always make sure that you have a lockbox. So let me take you inside the property. Welcome to the property. This is a six bedroom HMO. In this property, we have six little ballrooms, five which are currently tenanted already, but I'll tell you a little bit about that in a while. And I've actually got a little surprise for you in here also. So come with me. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> hey guys, so I told you I had a little surprise for you in room number one. This is room number one, kind of welcome, but more importantly, I want to welcome you to also meet KD. KD, say hello. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so guys, please be nice. Katie's a little bit camera shy. Um, I don't know why. So again, just let us know in the comments all the good stuff you think about KD so that she can be happy that she actually did this video. But the reason I wanted to bring KD on and the reason I wanted to bring her on here in room number one is because this room and this house basically brought me and Katie together as kind of partners in terms of a business venture in terms of taking on this property. So Katie is actually, she doesn't know this, but she's actually one of our youngest investors um, into our organization. And she decided to invest with us in order for us to take over this property back in February of this year. So Katie, I guess it'll be good for people watching this to <laughs> kind of understand kind of why you decided to invest with impact properties, but more importantly, kind of like, how did, how did all this happen? So yeah, just how did, how did it happen? How did you end up connecting with us? And, and why did you say, yeah, I want to invest and talk to me? Okay, so how it happened. So basically, um, I've always been passionate about properties and I've never been, you know, like um, around people who own properties. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know about the market and how to get in. So, um, what happened is then during that time I joined a WhatsApp group yep. and I was seeing you posting like every week uh, about property. Yep, yep. So it took me I would say three months to kind of like decide you know, to contact you di directly yep. and then I was like maybe you know it's, it's, it's going to be like a good opportunity mm -hmm. and then we had this chat and it was really really fast very um, very very good because you were like uh, answering all my questions and then I, at the same time you were offering this uh, this project you know to enter and I was kind of interested asking you know like all those different questions and uh, you did answer really well and you kind of convinced me to, to join Powerful. Um, so basically everything happened in literally two days yeah, um, that's true. I, I sent the, the money the, the next day I think yeah. and then we signed also the, the paperwork to make everything very legalized yeah. and, and then since then uh, we've been catching up um, yeah very regularly to know what's going on with the property and um, so you explained, you know, to me all the issues that were around the property. So we went through, you know, every single issues and look at solutions on how to uh, fix the the problem. Yeah. And because I I never managed, you know, property. So you were very supportive, you know, to uh, show me all those th different things. And um, and then yeah, so it's been a great journey so far. Okay. Um, so I'm really happy um, about joining this uh, program. And I hope you know, like, we'll be able, you know, to be very successful, you know, at the end of this year. We definitely will be. I can guarantee <laughs> you that. And the success has already started. So, just to give like everybody watching kind of an insight, I'm gonna break down exactly what we're doing here in terms of the property. It will probably take more in-depth breakdown, but again, we're available for that. Again, let us know in the comments if you want a more in-depth breakdown. But basically, last year, um, in the year 2020. 
there was a particular managing agent who I was aware of who had control of this property and they were generating some good funds in the property over the years. I think they had it for like three, four years. But in the lockdown, basically they had two tenants or two or three tenants move out. Straight after they had tenants moving out, they then had the tenants that they did move in because they were trying to move tenants in really quickly under renting the rooms, So these people weren't paying the appropriate rent for the rooms because obviously the managing agent just wanted to get people in quickly. Then side by side with that, because they got these people in quickly, they weren't really checking who these people really were. So the group of people that ended up together really weren't feeling each other. So there's arguments, disagreements, all of these things. Now these things are problems that most people would run away from. And obviously the old managing agent decided he wanted to manage, run away from it. And as a result, that created a great opportunity for me and my team to come on board and say, well, hold on a minute. These are problems we think we can solve. So what we had to do is we had to get a very good understanding of what those problems were. The tenants not agreeing with each other, food get, getting missing, going stolen. I could go down a whole long list. But as Katie said, we basically briefed Katie with all of these problems. Now, just for you guys as viewers, one of the things I want to share with you to give you insight, if you're looking at doing HMO properties or management, is you really need to understand that sometimes one man's problem is another person's profit, okay? And this is something my dad used to teach me when I was really young. He taught me a completely different way. I'll actually share with you what he said to me. He used to say, son, one man's poison is another man's food. And it just really helped me understand that the same way some people don't like cheese, someone else does like cheese. So if you find someone who doesn't like cheese, you could probably buy cheese from them way below the price that cheese is supposed to actually cost because they're trying to get rid of it. And that's exactly what happened with this property. The managing agent was actually really trying to get rid of it. And that created the situation for me and Katie to jump into it. Mm -hmm. So what we basically did is we structured a deal where because it's a management property, the rent on this property each month is around 2,000. It's exactly, I was going to say around, but I can be exact. It's exactly 2,113 pounds a month, okay? Now, the reason it ended up being 13 is because when we negotiated, we ended up saying to the landlord, we'll pay the TV license, but we'll pay as part of the rent. So we pay 2113 every single month to hold control of this property.